Hey, what's going on? Arden Zwelling and Ben Nicholson Smith here for sportsnet.ca. And this is instant analysis off of the Toronto Blue Jays and Miami Marlins trade here on Tuesday, June the 29th. And Ben, we've been talking for weeks now about the urgency the Blue Jays ought to be facing to make a move to address what has been one of baseball's worst bullpens over the last six weeks. And now we've got it. Heading to Miami, utility infielder Joe Panic minor leaguer Andrew McKinvale coming back to Toronto, Adam Simber and Corey Dickerson. Simber, a side-arming right-hander, doesn't throw particularly hard, doesn't stri- strike a ton of guys out, but he keeps the ball down, generates a lot of ground ball contact, gives Charlie Montoyo another weapon to use late in games. Dickerson's a left-handed hitting outfielder. Some good years in Tampa, some good years in Pittsburgh in the past. Hasn't been his best this season or last, currently out injured with a foot contusion. So two very different pieces acquired, two very interesting pieces, Ben, uh, and Simber's the one we're going to see soonest. So what kind of impact do you think he's going to have on a struggling Blue Jays bullpen? Well, I see him as an upgrade. First of all, this is help for a team that definitely needs it, like you said. And the way that I see him helping this team is in certain situations. Like you said, he's not a big strikeout guy. He's not someone who brings velocity, averages 86 miles an hour with his fastball. So hitters are not going to be overwhelmed, but it's a different look. And it's one that's very tough on right-handed hitters. So where I see him helping the Blue Jays team is let's say Steven Matz is in the sixth inning. He's running up against 100 pitches. You have a couple right-handed hitters coming up. Well, if you got base runners on, maybe you want a double play. Maybe you just want a tough look against those right-handed bats. Simber's the guy in that situation because he's very tough on righties. He can get you a ground ball and help you escape from some innings. So I don't see him as the kind of guy who's going to be your you know traditional setup man to Jordan Romano by any stretch. But there are specific situations in the course of a season, maybe in the course of a playoff series, if the Blue Jays get that far, where it's very valuable to have someone who can pose a tough matchup to some tough right-handed hitters. And this is secondary, Ben, but he's just a fun dude to watch pitch. If you look up his mechanics, they are super funky. He starts almost closed off to the plate, like as if he's facing second base. And then he is like scraping his knuckles along the mound as he fires these super low release point, uh, you know, as I said, like 86 mile an hour pitches, but they appear to be rising to the hitter, which is what makes it very uncomfortable. He's very unorthodox. And look, when he's locating, he's very difficult to square up. There's a reason why he doesn't give up many home runs at all. Like it's just tough to get his stuff in the air so if he's commanding his pitches it's a really good tool for charlie montoyo to have in his bullpen particularly against right-handed uh hitting and not for nothing he comes with three more years of team control yep. after this season so uh, you've got some flexibility there if you're the blue jays uh the other half of this deal Corey dickerson um a few years removed from his all-star season obviously um and from the uh, pretty impressive productivity we we saw with the rays and the pirates but still a capable league average bat the last couple of years he's still crushing right-handed pitching on the surface it looks like um a big part of his inclusion in this deal is the blue jays taking on the rest of his salary this year around four four and a half million dollars he's still owed in 2021 maybe giving the marlins a bit of salary relief but what do you think his role is on this team when he's healthy just considering that the blue jays already have plenty of outfielders kicking around the roster well like you said first of all we are talking about someone who makes a decent chunk of money with that eight plus salary so from miami's standpoint that's probably what's nudging this deal ahead here is finding a taker for someone who's not a part of their long-term future now for the blue jays they have a need for a left-handed bat. And we've seen Rowdy Tellez struggle. He's in the minor leagues. They have a need for someone alongside Lourdes Gurriel Jr. out of that DH role or off the bench who can be a source of left-handed power. And Dickerson is that. So, you know, moving forward, once he is healthy, then we're talking about someone who should be able to give the Blue Jays a a decent at-bat against right-handed pitching on a pretty consistent basis. Maybe start some games if there's a tough right-hander. You don't necessarily want Lourdes Gurriel Jr. starting every time because he's better against lefties. So it gives you some more options. And again, late in games improves the Blue Jays' pinch hit options. So it's a role player. We're not talking about someone who transforms this roster, but these are marginal upgrades that help the Blue Jays at two roster spots without costing them a much, much of their long-term future. 
No, it doesn't cost them much at all. I was surprised to see the uh, the price that the Blue Jays had to pay. I mean, this is a, a slam dunk when you think about it. Pretty off the off the map minor leaguer and, and Joe Panic, who was a fine you know veteran, a fine professional in the clubhouse, all those things. But I mean, Dickerson is an upgrade as a bench bat, clearly, and he just solidifies this team's floor. Um, you know, I don't know that he has an everyday role on this team, but he is a big time upgrade as a bench bat. Think about all the times we've seen Charlie Montoyo looking for a left-handed pinch hitter late in the game. And here comes Reese McGuire, who's on a nice hot streak right now. Sure. But he passed through waivers this spring for a reason, or here comes Joe panic. Who's a fine contact hitter and he'll put the ball in play, but he's not really a threat for an extra base hit. So once he's healthy, I think that Corey Dickerson can just be that late game option um, that any team that wants to play meaningful games in September and October is going to need on its bench. So finally, Ben, what's next? Clearly, the Blue Jays cannot stop upgrading here. They need to keep adding to the bullpen. Um, but I'm curious if you think that Simber's addition decreases the urgency to do that. And I'm also curious if you think that adding Dickerson allows the Blue Jays to kind of shift away from maybe targeting position player upgrades, change their strategy a little bit in the coming weeks towards the trade deadline. To, to me, the needs still exist on both fronts. I think they still need bullpen help uh, even after adding Simbor. I mean, you look at the struggles they've had. It's not one reliever away. It's not two relievers away. They need a lot of help in that bullpen. So definitely should still be on the lookout and will still be on the lookout to acquire relievers and there still is a need for that you know more traditional setup guy who can get hitters on both sides of the plate who's not a specialist who can just go out there and dominate that need exists if the blue jays can fill it so that would be in my opinion priority number one a starting pitcher would help as well and i think positionally there could be room for a third baseman on this team where you allow Kevin Biggio to return to kind of a super utility role someone who's still playing a lot but not necessarily at third every day and so I don't think the Blue Jays should necessarily be out on the third base options that exist on the trade market. Not that they have to be desperate because Biggio and Espinal give them a, certainly a decent base to work from, but there is room to explore and see if there is a significant third base upgrade to be found at some point in the next month. Yeah, I completely agree. Left-handed hitting infielder could play some third, can even you know play a little second for you. Like a guy like Eduardo Escobar jumps right off the page from the Arizona Diamondbacks. He would be a great addition to this team. Um, Adam Frazier might be a little too pricey from the Pirates, but someone like that I think still would really help this team in, in a big way going forward. And yeah, the bullpen is not done, clearly. And I, I doubt the Blue Jays are done adding relief options because they are not just an Adam Simber away uh they're going to need more options to give charlie montoyo so we don't see some of the bullpen meltdowns that we have all been watching over the last several weeks but an interesting trade for the blue jays a tidy piece of business it makes them better going forward can't wait to see what's next this has been instant analysis